Um, I am Betsy Wheeland. I am the Associate Director with North Central Region, SARE. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's looking okay. Does that look okay, Marie? Looks great. Okay, wonderful. So Marie's gonna help me with questions in the chat. And um, yeah, we're so glad you're here. Uh, so I uh, started in April, North Central Region SARE, and um, I manage the partnership grant and the graduate student grant um, with the group. Uh, for the agenda for the day, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about SARE nationally and North Central Region SARE. Um, just so you understand a little bit about who we are and what we're trying to accomplish, some details about the partnership grant, um, some tips for putting together your application, and then at the end I'll walk through um, our online system and how you can set up your account and get started with your proposal. If you're not interested in that part, there'll be a chance for you to scoot out ahead of time. Okay, come on, slides. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we got it. <laughs> okay. So um, let's make sure you're in the right place. We're going to be talking about our partnership grant. And here's a couple of fast facts to make sure this might be a program for you. If it's not, um, you can scoot on out. So this grant really is looking to foster cooperation between agricultural professionals and farmers and ranchers to do on-farm research, demonstration, and education projects around the North Central region of the U.S. The funding is up to $50,000, and um, this is eligible for agriculture professionals to be the, the PI or the project coordinator on this project, and you need to have three or more um, unique farming operations in the North Central region. So we'll get into those details, what about all that means a little bit later, but if you're feeling like, oh, that's really not a good fit, um, uh, you can scoot out and have a good day, and we're happy to talk to you about um, other projects or if um, you can follow along and see if it might be a project um, that you're interested in. Okay, so about SARE and the grants that we have. Um, so again, I want to give you a little bit of context and uh, about SARE so you can understand our mission and goals and see how the project that you're thinking about, see how that might align with those. It can help increase your chances of funding if you can help articulate that. Okay, so um, SARE is um, a, a, a funding program um, that provides grants and outreach to advance sustainable agriculture in the whole of American agriculture. Um, so we are in the, um, the gold states there. Um, in our, um, let's see, the states that we're involved in are Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. <clears throat> SARE is a different kind of a grant program. Uh, it started in 1988, and we strive to be decentralized. We have state coordinators in every state. Um, we are science-based. Um, often you'll see in our proposals where we talk, uh, have you discuss uh, what research has been done, either um, with SARE funding or others, and how the project that you're doing adds to that knowledge base um, in, in science. We are grassroots. We uh, are, we'll talk several times about we're um, a farmer-driven organization that um, listens to the producers and what the needs and the questions are. Um, and so we, we look to be problem solving, practical. Um, the projects that we tend to fund are those where um, the technology or the idea can be implemented out in the field in the next three to five years. So pure research is important and it's important for agriculture and the programs that, we've, that we have are looking more at things that are more ready to go in the, the near future. Um, SARE also strives to be inclusive and look for ways that we can um, have programs that serve all of agriculture, including those that have um, historically not been um, served as well um, as others in the past. So the model that SARE uses is uh, thinking uh, deeply and how um, can your projects 
um, address one of these three legs of sustainability in agriculture. So is it helping agriculture be more ecologically sound, more socially responsible, or um, helping the economic viability of, uh, of farmers and ranchers in their communities across the region? Um, as I said, um, uh, farmers are really, farmers and ranchers are really important part of the work that we do. And um, we want to explore problems that are identified by farmers and ranchers. And um, the projects that are successful with SARE have them as vol involved as much as possible um, in all aspects of the project, whether it's designing the project, whether it's um, actually conducting the project or in the outreach at the end. And here's a short list of all the types of work that we do. It's, um, as we say, kind of soup to nuts with agriculture uh, across the North Central region. So um, what pest management, uh, food systems, high tunnels, season extension work, um, you can see the list here, small ruminant, um, pollinator, habitat diversity, food sovereignty is an area that uh, we've been spending quite a bit more time um, funding projects in that area, urban agriculture and more. So um, if you've got a project that's addressing any of those three legs of sustainability, um, it might be a fit for us. And often, um, you know, the, these projects are up to $50,000. So there's a limit in the time of, of what can be done. So you may be focused focusing more on one of those three aspects um, than the others. And that's totally understandable and normal, but it does help if you can address um, the three as uh, uh, in some fashion, if you're addressing the, um, those three. Here is our whole suite of programs. Um, from the smallest funding amount to the largest funding amount. Um, I'm not going to focus too much um, on some of these. Um, I'll, I will say that the partnership grant is right in the middle, and sometimes um, our farmer rancher grants and our research and education grants are highly competitive. They're funding um, a much lower percentage of the proposals that come in than the partnership. So sometimes we steer people towards this partnership grant opportunity because um, we uh, receive in the neighborhood of 40 proposals a year and we fund roughly 20 of those. So um, that's uh, uh, quite a bit better than, the, for instance, the research and education one. Um, we get in 170 pre-proposals for there and we can only fund about 17 or so of those, give or take. Um, project here or there. So um, you can take a look at our North Central Region um, SARE website, which will have a, several spots where I'll, I'll highlight that, but it's northcentral.sare.org. And um, there you'll find lots of information about our programs there. Okay, and I see we do have some um, questions coming in the chat. I'm going to hold on to those till the end. So we'll see if um, the quest as I go through the um, the rest of the presentation here, I might answer those questions. Um, if I do, great. If you still got your questions, um, Maria will help me go through those um, towards the end here. So I will start to focus on the uh, partnership grant here a little bit more. So as I said, the intention here is to foster collaboration between agriculture professionals and small groups of farmers and ranchers. And we want to catalyze on-farm research, demonstration, and education activities related to sustainable agriculture. All right, so that's, um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, here's a few details for you to know that might make uh, your decision about whether you want to apply or not. Um, the call is open right now, so we are accepting applications right now, and that closes October 17th at 4 p.m. Central Time. Um, you will need to submit your application online. Um, if you do want a paper copy of it, I can get that to you. There'll be information at the end um, to reach out to us. Um, the dollar amount, the maximum is $50,000, uh, and the project duration can be up to two years. As I said, you will need to have a team of three or more farmers and ranchers with unique operations. So they need to be separate business entities. It can't be um, a husband and a wife or two sisters um, working together. They need to be unique operations. Um, and we often 
get asked, um, can there be other um, collaborating farms outside of the region? And yes, the answer is yes, as long as the majority of the work is happening in one of those um, 12 states or in those 12 states. Um, it does need to be led by an ag professional, as I said, and I'll get into um, what we mean by that in just a second here, but um, we'll need to have um, an agriculture professional be the, um, the uh, principal investigator or project coordinator, we sometimes call them. Um, and again, as I said, uh, last year, um, we funded 21 out of 44 proposals. Okay, so agriculture professionals, what is that? We try to keep that um, a fairly broad definition. Um, it might be a nonprofit uh, organization. It might be extension or university folks, um, either um, a researcher, an extension educator, agent. Um, it might be a governmental staff like soil and water conservation district staff. Um, it could be a certified crop advisor um, or other natural resource consultants. Um, it can be a, a for-profit business um, or other farmer rancher leaders as well if they um, have the capacity to manage the, the financing. Okay, and then again, if there's questions about your particular situation, you're welcome to ask those if we can, if we have time, or also um, you can reach out to me as well. So another um, thing to think about as you're developing your proposal is um, think about uh, what do we mean by outcomes and impacts? So as a public institution, uh, we, we must be mindful of documenting the impact of our funds. And um, so it's a pretty critical aspect of our proposals to think about how your project aligns with SARE's um, three legs of sustainability, broad-based outcomes. So how is this project um, improving economic viability of farmers or um, the businesses in the community? Um, how is it um, sustaining and improving environmental quality and natural resources in which agriculture depends? Um, is it enhancing the quality of life for farmers and ranchers, communities, or society as a whole? Um, so that's what um, part of the review committee they're looking at is what's the long-term impact you're trying to achieve, and does that look to be um, like you actually can achieve it? Um, so um, even if your project focuses uh, on just one of those, like I said, you should indicate how it might impact or what's your intended outcome for all three of those. Um, and again, so you know, these are these are long term goals, right? So economic viability and you know environmental quality, those take time um, to to show results of. So um, if you want to narrow that down to the outcomes and impacts, I think of um, the most short term is the the knowledge gained, what's the 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 concept learned or the skill learned. Um, then that knowledge leads to behavior change. Um, uh, so perhaps they people start to change an approach or people start to apply the, a skill that they learned. And then the impact is that longer term um, situation we're looking at where you have condition change or perhaps broader um, impact around the region. So think about it in your project, um, you know, what knowledge gains you're looking for, what behavior change you're looking for, and what long-term impact you might be reaching. So for example, um, let's say you're an extension educator and there's a group of growers interested in learning a strategy uh, and technique for selling to institutions. So, um, and they have, they've seen other models um, in another part of the country that they wanna try. So you might put together a project to bring out a speaker or bring curriculum to them um, and get that group together at someone's operation to learn from the speaker, or maybe you wanna do some site visits and um, some planning on each of the operations. Um, and you notice that those are measurable things. You know, So as you develop your plan, think about how you'll measure your results. How will you know if you've achieved your goals? How will you know if um, that group of producers has learned something, um, if they're gonna change their behavior, or um, if you can, you know, for two years, it's hard to get to that long-term impact, but um, how might you be able to track that, those, um, those uh, knowledge gains, et cetera. Okay, so here, um, if you've got, if you'd like to put into the chat here, I know, um, has anybody got other examples that you've seen or you're kind of thinking about with either knowledge gains, behavior change that you're looking for, or some uh, long-term impacts 
and how you might measure those, you can um, put that chat into, or you can put those, those thoughts and ideas into the chat if you've got them here. I'll pause for just a sec. Anybody got some ideas on knowledge gains that you'd like to learn or behavior change? see here. Okay, well, you can think about it here. Um, let's see here. I'm not seeing anything pop up. Okay, um, let's see how to improve Hayland to be more productive. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you increase collaboration and communication be considered a behavior change? Yes, if you're seeing um, groups of people interacting more that weren't interacting before, yes, that would definitely count. Yep, starting up um, aquaculture, adding that into um, yeah, businesses, yep, that would count. Uh, education for ethnic grocery stores on purchasing from local foods be eligible. Would education for ethnic grocery stores on purchasing from local farmers be eligible? Um, yes, I believe, um, Marie, um, do you know if we funded something on that? I think we might need to get back to you on that one. So, um, might, um, this is where my newness, Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. Um, yeah, um, agroforestry system work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Feeling confident that soil management practices pay off for farm businesses, yep. Yeah, intended behavior change and confidence level. Those are all, um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I might have to get back to you on the store owner one. That's an interesting one, but I think with the food systems in the vein of food systems, um, uh, I might need to think about that one a little bit. Okay, um, yep, increasing adoption of cover crops and cover crop fields, yep, that's some tangible ones. Okay, so Maria and I are putting a, um, a note about that one. Yes. And um, yeah, we'll get back to that one. Okay, we're gonna move on in the interest of time, but great job, you are on the right track, all of you. Okay, and so what kinds of projects do we fund? So um, again, we're helping explore innovative solutions through research demonstration and education projects. Um, so perhaps you want to test and evaluate and adapt practices for their operations to conduct learning circles, educational events, field days, or demonstrations to um, further disseminate information to other farmers and ranchers. As I'm thinking out loud um, about your question about um, grocers, you could flip it the other way perhaps and talk with producers about how they might market to um, grocers in their area. That for sure, I could see that um, being um, a project that Sarah would, would consider. Um, yeah, so good question. I'll keep thinking about it though. Um, let's see here. So it might be to develop, you might develop curriculum, fact sheets, case studies, videos um, about the learning that happened. Um, you might develop new technologies or create or modify equipment as well. So if there's um, a piece of equipment you all want to um, try out in your area, um, that might be a way to do it. Take some of that risk out of it. Okay, so what do we mean by that innovative word? So it might be a completely new idea. It might be something that's never been done um, before uh, or it might be something that's been proven in other places and you want to see if it works in your community or in your geography or in the climate that you're in. Um, let's say you've seen something work out in the Western states, but you're more in the Eastern state and your climate is really different and you want to see if it will actually work or not. That definitely is something that we consider. Okay, so let's say you've kind of got an idea, you're thinking it might um, that might be a good proposal. So now what? let's get you starting to think about um, the application process and how do you get ready? So here I wanna talk about um, two main resources that will help you. We have two websites that have a whole bunch of really great information on them. The first is the North Central SARE website, northcentral.sare.org. And here you will find the call for proposals for this 
uh, this program and all of our North Central Sierra programs. And also you can reach out um, and find a person to talk to here. So for instance, with this pro with this program, um, you'll find my, con my contact. Um, and then we have for all of our folks in the North Central region. <clears throat> we also have a national SARE projects database, projects.sare.org. And um, this is a great spot to go and look at um, previously funded work by SARE. So we've got, I think I heard in the neighborhood of 7,000 projects that SARE has funded over the years um, that um, you can look and see what we've funded in the past to get an idea of the types of projects that we fund. Also, you can look in your um, project area to see if what kind of work we've done in that particular subject matter. Um, this projects.sare.org is also where you'll go to um, submit your application. And then um, should you get your, um, should you be awarded your grant, that's where you'll go to manage it as well. Um, I'll get into the details of those later, but um, I just wanted to give you a heads up that I'll be talking about two different websites as we go. Okay. So the step one in putting together your application is to decide if it really is a good fit. So make sure you go to northcentral.sare.org, download the call for proposals before you start your online submission. We have a lot more information than I can go to uh, in the webinar. Um, all the details are in that um, call. Um, so I, we strongly recommend you take a look at that. Um, as I said, take a look at what's been funded in the past and um, um, to get a sense of what we, how we fund things and, and what we're looking for and what work has been done. Um, so, and note how your idea is similar or different and how it might add into the body of knowledge that's been done before. Um, so how is it similar, different or complementary to the work that's been done? <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, you should also know that um, you will need to attach in your application um, a resume or CV for the ag professional or ag professionals that are applying. You'll need three letters of or you'll need letters of partic participation from the producers that are involved. Um, and, uh, so you want to make sure you leave a little bit of time for them to get those written. Um, if there's animals involved, livestock involved, um, you may be required to um, submit an animal welfare statement, but you won't need to do that uh, until you know if you're getting funded. Uh, we don't request that uh, in the original application process, but just know you might need to go back and get that. And then there'll also be an institutional application sign-off page, uh, which takes a little bit of time to get done. So make sure that you leave time um, to get those filled out. Okay, uh, so what can we fund? People often ask, well, what kinds of, uh, of things are eligible in your budget that you put together? We can pay for salary for people's time. We believe strongly in paying farmers and ranchers for their time. So um, make sure that you um, uh, are doing that. We've got some guidelines and suggestions for that in the call for proposals. Um, if there's supplies that you need, um, we can do some equipment if it's mobile and um, generally speaking, it needs to be under $5,000 or more. So um, it needs to be um, required for the project. Um, we can pay for travel, for getting people around to meetings or bringing in speakers. Um, we can pay for meeting expenses. Um, there's a little bit of a caveat. The food needs to be um, involved. We've got some language around that that has to be necessary for the continuity of the meeting. For example, if you um, are running a meeting from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, of course, you need to feed them lunch. So um, that is certainly an allowable part of it. Um, then we also allow 10% for indirect costs. Um, if your institution's indirect costs are higher than that, um, I'm sorry, we can only pay for up to 10% of it. Uh, we cannot pay for permanent structures, so we can't help you build a new barn um, or do upgrades, retrofitting. Um, Sarah, we can't pay for branded attire or promotional items. Um, sometimes that comes up with the Sarah logo. And we can't pay for tuition um, and, and books for courses. Um, so again, there's more in the call for proposals. You'll hear me say that a few times. Go check that out for uh, a longer list. Okay, 
Um, so part of the obligation of receiving funds from us is that you uh, need to report on your activities and the outcomes of your project. So um, you need to plan uh, in gathering this data. It's um, it's going to be in the report process that's in the online system. So you'll need to gather, um, you know, kind of the who, what, when, where, um, who, how many events you had, how many people participated. Um, if there's articles published, um, some of that will be after the fact. Um, you know, if you um, are able to gather some information with behavior change, um, and then also if you are able to leverage other dollars based on this grant, that's um, good for us to know. And any of those you know, longer term impact situations um, are helpful for us to know about. Um, and again, in the call for proposals, there's a grantee reporting expectations matrix towards the end that has all of that listed out for you. Okay, um, also part of getting a grant from SARE is, as I mentioned, the annual reports, or there, there's reporting. Um, if you have a two-year project, you'll you'll do a, a report partway through. Um, that'll usually be um, in, uh, I think they're March, they are due. Um, and then there'll be a final report that's due 60 days after the end of your project. Um, and then you will submit those reports into projects.sara.org. Um, one of our favorite things to do is visit with grant recipients and learn how their projects are going. So you might get a phone call from me or from Marie here um, if you get a grant um, asking if we might be able to stop by if we happen to be in the area. Um, or we might put together um, an informational article or um, something like that, or maybe even a video about your um, project and um, what went well and maybe what didn't go well with it. Uh, let's see here. So you might be wondering, well, who decides uh, which projects get funded. Uh, we have a peer review panel that's made up of um, farmers, ranchers, nonprofit organizations, extension, university um, folks, ag business, ag professionals, um, and they um, have uh, criteria that they use for ranking them and selecting them. And then it goes to the administrative council um, for, um, for the final vote about what gets funded or not. And a pro tip for you um, is uh, it's a good check uh, on yourself to go through and use that scoring criteria that's in the call and see how you would score it yourself. Or if you're brave, give it to a buddy and see if they'll score it for you. Um, see if you um, need to strengthen your proposal at all that way. Okay, so here, uh, let's see here. Here is the timeline. Um, they, as I said, they're due October 17th by 4 p.m. Central Time. Um, so you're going to need to make sure that all that paperwork gets done ahead of time. Um, you've got, um, have that ready to go. Um, the decisions are made um, in early February about who will be receiving funding and um, all applicants are um, informed as fast as we can about that. Um, your project cannot start before April 1st of 2025. So um, the funds will be available right around then. So the work can start then. Um, and then, um, as I said, if it's more than it, um, more than 18 months or so, you'll have uh, uh, prod an annual report due partway through the project, and then you'll have your final report due. And again, that's based on um, when your project ending is. Okay, so the next step, so let's say you've got all of that, um, you're feeling pretty good about your idea, is to phone a friend. Um, I am more than happy to talk with you about your idea. There's my contact information. Um, we have um, state coordinators um, that are, would love to talk with you. Um, they might be able to help you out in your project and might be able to read your proposal for you. Um, I'll show you where you can go to find them on um, our NCR SARE website um, is where you'll find their contact information. Michael Fields Agricultural Institute um, helps people put together um, grant proposals um, in agriculture, so they can be a great resource for you. And then also, um, wherever you're located, um, there might be extension folks, um, natural resource conservation service or um, soil and water conservation uh, district staff that can help you. 
Okay, so let's see here. So uh, just to remind you again about the North Central Region SARE website. Um, again, here's a good spot to go back again to learn about the programs, download your call, find the state coordinators, um, and find help. So uh, the call for proposals for this partnership grant, um, you'll find um, you'll find there. Um, I will leave that there. Um, if you click on the state programs, you'll find um, a list about our state coordinators there. So, and I see that Marie put them in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, so as again, the state coordinators are a great resource for you, whether you um, receive a grant or not, um, I encourage you to reach out to them. Uh, all right, step three is to develop your proposal. Uh, let's get your information pulled together. Uh, we do recommend that you use um, a word processing app like Word or Google Docs or something like that to draft your sections that you can do your word counts. Um, the system, um, it does it it does not save your work. Um, you have to make sure that you click save as you go um, so it can speed up the process of getting it all done. But again, in the call for proposals, all the word counts and all of the details are listed there. So you can um, get started pulling your information together there. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then, as I said, you want to go and research projects that have been previously funded. So you're going to go to that projects.sare.org website, uh, and then you can click on the little, um, the little magnifying glass to do your search. And um, you can narrow your search down by, um, by the type of work that you're doing. So let's say you, you can search for cover crops, you can search for high tunnels, whatever it is that you're looking for, you can narrow it down by region or you can look for the whole, um, you know, the whole US, um, all of the SARE projects go in there across the country. So um, you can narrow it down as you'd like. Uh, let's see here. So this is what it looks like when you do a search. Let's see, um, just a quick search for cover crops um, <clears throat> under partnership. Um, this is what you might get. Uh, so you can um, read a little bit about those proposals or you can see what um, has come of those. Uh, let's see, you do not need a, um, to log into the system to look at those. That um, You can look at that uh, website without logging in. Uh, let's see here. Then, um, so you did that. You're going to pull together um, your uh, who, what, when, where, why. And so for the summary, it's a brief summary. That's going to be what comes up in that little blurb there um, when you search for projects. You'll need to think about your objectives. Um, and that's uh, really what you want to get accomplished. What are the, the, um, the, uh, tangible things that are going to come out of your of your project. Um, the relevance to sustainability, that's again, looking at those three legs of sustainability and our long-term impacts. What's, what's the problem you're trying to solve? Um, and then you can get into the, um, the more of the details, the activities, including the outreach plan, which is how are you going to spread the word about the work that you did? So that's also an important aspect of it is um, you do the work, but then how are you going to share that work out with others? Okay, um, you will need to talk about uh, the role of everyone involved for the agriculture professionals and the farmers and ranchers. Um, what are each of them going to do in the project? Um, again, we talked about that previous research. You know, so you've done all of that work um, about what projects have been funded. And then again, the outcomes and impacts um, and what are, you, what are you looking to accomplish? Okay, so then in the budget, um, you'll need to pull that together. What are all the things that you need? Um, here's some examples of, um, you know, the budget categories um, and some line items. Um, and make sure that everything that's in there can be justifi justifiable and you're describing how it's going to be used and why it's going to be used uh, in the project. And make sure that the math adds up. We do, do go through every budget and make sure all the math lines up and how you calculated everything. So um, show your work and show your math because um, we'll come back and ask you questions <laughs> if you don't. Okay, and then we talked a little bit about the attachments. Um, 
So again, I talked about that a little bit. You'll need um, a resume or CV for all the ag professionals involved. Um, the letters of participation, excuse me, I should have changed that uh, to letters of participation. The application sign off sheet and that animal welfare statement only if you're funded. Okay, so um, that's enough help, right? You've got it, but wait, we do have more hot off the press is we have some new how-to video tutorials that my colleague Liz put together. So you can go to um, our main website, the northcentral.sare.org website, and you can find them there, or you can go to YouTube and look under North Central Region SARE video, uh, NCR SARE video to find our playlist. And <clears throat> I am going to pause there um for any questions that we've got um so the next section that i'm going to do is that step by step on setting up your account and starting your proposal so after you've got your question answered if you'd like you can um say goodbye um you've got my contact information there to join me after the fact so thanks for putting the video playlist in there so Let's go back to questions. I haven't been following the chat very closely, so <laughs> what do we got for questions? Betsy, sure, Betsy, do you want me to kind of go through the chat and read the questions to you? I'd be that glad to be do fabulous. that. fabulous, thank you, yes. Okay, so the first question we had come in um, was regarding a match. Is match okay. considered when you're evaluating proposals for this grant program? It is not, um, that is not a factor that we use in scoring them and um, we are, um, that's, it's actually not even asked. Um, so yeah, we don't look at that. You can certainly reference if you are conducting a project and you have funding for another part of it. And this is, you can certainly describe what you would like Sarah to pay for as a part of the, the project that you're, the bigger project that you're working on. Um, matches are, do not either help or hinder you in our grant process. And then the next question is, um, I know that testing products is not allowed under this funding. How far does that extend? For example, if a vegetable farmer I am working with is testing the manure application rates on yields, would they be allowed to use a commercial compost product like cow's milk? I believe that, yes, we have used that in the past. Um, yes, that would be allowed. The next question, can an employee of a nonprofit be the PI or does it need to be the manager in the organization? I believe that is uh, for SARE's purpose, that would be allowable. That would be something that you would wanna make sure is cleared with your organization. And that's part of the um, application sign off sheet is that's a, an institutional sign off that whoever, if it's a nonprofit, it might be your board that needs to sign that application uh, sign off sheet. So you need to make sure that um, you're checking early to make sure that you've got time um, to get that approved by your institution for whatever, um, but yeah, certainly nonprofit organizations um, are eligible to be that, um, that PI. Mm -hmm. The next question is, is there a limit of grants per university and or state? Mm. I don't think that for this partnership, correct me if I'm wrong, Marie or Erin, if you know the answer to this, <laughs> I don't believe that there is a limit for this grant program um, for an institution for applications. Okay. That's also Others, my there's only. Yeah, so for others, you can, um, for the research and education grant, you can only, in a, one PI can only apply for one grant a year. Yeah. Next question, are there any restrictions regarding the size of farms involved? Not that I know of, nope. Um, so we've done, um yeah the the whole of agriculture so it could be you know a multi-thousand acre place in nebraska to an urban agriculture place that's um, a very small plot of land so um, we consider all of it agriculture um this question might have been posted with regards to the 
question that you posted earlier, but just in case it's not, there was a question that asked, could working with the Savannah Institute to create an agroforestry system work? I think I would need more details about what, um, <clears throat> what you're talking about there. So that's one where um, I'd welcome a, an, uh, welcome a conversation in more detail about what you're thinking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next question is, do the cooperating farmers need to be certified organic farmers? No. That's a short <laughs> short answer on that one, no. <laughs> but that would not uh, help or hinder um, your application. Would this partnership grant fit for improving a Hayland project or would it fit better under the research and education program? Mm. Again, I would need more details about what um, what you meant there and what the project details were. So again, happy to talk in person or, you know, uh, on the phone or an email, the information, happy to do that. Can I work with both organic and conventional cooperating farmers? Sure can, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, let's see. So the next question is, will you be sharing these slides? So I wanna point out, I can answer this. The slides are already on the Partnership Grant Program webpage. If you go there, you'll see there's a link that says view slides. Um, so these slides are already posted on there. And then probably within the next 24 hours, a recording of this webinar will be posted on the Partnership Grant Program page as well. I will say I kind of overhauled the project a little, the, the slide deck a little bit. So <laughs> we'll get that this latest version updated as well. So um, increased readability. Um, can the project start later than April 1st? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> Just the earliest you can start activities is April 1st. Um, but yeah, it's not a problem to start later. As long as your project only goes for uh, I think it's 23 months officially is the, the date, almost two years. The next question is, who is considered to be an ag professional? Mm -hmm. um, well, I did reference that a little bit earlier. So we do keep that fairly broad. Um, so it could be, um, I think about it as someone who either uh, is working with um, producers already in an education setting or is um, providing services. So we get a lot of people applying that are um, extension professionals or university professionals. We get um, nonprofit organizations that are working in agriculture. Um, we've even had some that don't particularly work in agriculture, but they're bringing together groups of producers and um, they can be the project coordinator and they can manage the, the finances of it. So um, we keep it pretty broad. It might be um, soil and water conservation district folks or, um, or others in governmental agencies, a county staff or, um, or that sort of thing. I hope that helps narrow it down. <laughs> but yeah, pretty broad, pretty broad. Um, crop uh, consultants, um, fit in that as well, or other consulting agencies. Let's say you're working with a collaborative food hub or farmer co-op comprised of multiple small-scale diversified urban vegetable farms. Mm -hmm. How does the requirement that each farm ranch or ranch must be an independent and separate distinct operation apply to that circumstance? So yeah, we have had that um, work that's definitely in the vein. So if there is yeah a food hub that is taking in food from multiple different operations, that definitely counts. I also just got asked about, um, let's say there's an incubator, uh, a farm incubator that um, is one operation that is having multiple businesses come and work with that incubator farm, that also counts as well. So um, it's if it's a food hub, they're getting in produce from different um, farm entities and then those come in. So the, the cooperative, um, that food hub might be the be the PI on that. And then um, just talk about the different um, producers that they're working with to bring it in. Uh, and again, if that doesn't seem to be fitting the situation, I'm again, happy to talk with you about it. 
And then the next question is, does this program also cover educational programs with livestock and animal education in the community? Um, is it more like public facing? I'm not sure the details there. So if it's educating the public about animal agriculture, um, that's a good question. I believe that this one is more focused on education for farmers and ranchers. Um, perhaps if it's talking with farmers and ranchers about how they can educate the public, um, perhaps. But um, that one I might need to dig into a little bit more, unless Marie or Aaron, you've got other thoughts or, or ideas on that one. Yeah, I feel I like that that I've seen too many. I feel like for that question, maybe a, a phone call or emails in order just to get a little mm -hmm. bit more detail. Yeah. But yeah, I believe it's less on um, projects that are working directly to educate the public than it is on information for farmers and ranchers to do work. Do the three farmers and ranchers on the project need to submit anything to ensure they're approved partners? Um, patient uh, in there, you know, I would uh, encourage them to talk, talk about, you know, what their operation is and how they plan to be involved in the project. Um, but again, we leave that the the producer part of it um, at, at their own discretion about um, if it's a good fit for them. Can you apply to multiple grants within the Sarah Grant program? Yes, you can. Yep. So sometimes um, people will apply to um, the research and education pre-proposals, knowing that that's um, that that's really competitive. So they might do a scaled down version of it for the partnership grant, and that is certainly um, done on occasion. <laughs> And then just to clarify regarding the farmer rancher participation question, because um, Betsy broke up a little bit. Cool. The answer um, for that is that yes, they do need to submit a letter verifying their participation and explaining what how they're participating in the project. Yes, thank you. And I believe we've gotten all the chat questions and Ooh. questions answered. Okay. Um, Rin, as a backup, did you see anything that we missed? No, you have all been very thorough. So, and <laughs> great, great comments and resources and ideas from, from everybody. So, okay, good deal. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, I'm certainly happy to answer any more as we come on. Now we're gonna jump into the um, the application process. So again, um, if you're not interested in that, you can go watch Liz's videos or um, do that on your own. So we'll, we'll move on. Thank you all so much for that. If, um, if you are uh, leaving now, thanks for your interest and we look forward to seeing proposals from you. Okay, moving on. The application process. So here's where you go to projects.sare.org. And um, I've got a few screenshots here um, to, to take a look at, at the website and what you'll see. Um, if you haven't um, submitted a, a grant to SARE before, you'll need to start with creating an account and complete your profile. Um, to do that, you click on um, create an account there. Um, if you have um, applied or have a grant through SARE previously, you already have an account um, and um, you, you um, can go into those and you can update um, on your contact information and that your profile if you need to. And you can certainly contact us if you have trouble getting into your account. Okay, so um, so let's see. I think I had a duplicate slide here. So let's say that you um, need to create an account. We'll start there. Click on create an account. Uh, I just wanted to make a note there as you go through and are filling that out, you'll notice that we do ask for demographic information. Uh, I want to make sure that you know that this is not tied to your application, uh, that this goes, the information goes into um, a separate um, spreadsheet for us to um, keep track of how we're doing and reaching out to all of agriculture. And so it's for our own improvement only. 
Okay. Um, so to get started, let's say you got um, you've got logged in and you've got all your um, your account started. The next thing that you're going to do is to start a new grant proposal um, uh, under projects. Um, let's see here. Yep, start that new one. Then you are going to um, click on the North Central Region, and here it will show you all of the programs that um, have open applications right now. So again, here, if you are um, applying just for the partnership grant, you'll make sure to click on that one. You can come back to the same spot if you are applying for a farmer, rancher, or um, uh, research and education pre-proposal. It's all in the same spot, but make sure that you are clicking on the, the program that you want. Okay, then you are gonna start editing the missing information and um, it'll tell you, you know, in red there what's missing and you can click on that to change the information. Uh, let's see here. And you'll start with a brief description. That's that, um, 200, uh, oh, so we've got the word count in there, 150 word count in there. That's that little um, summary that shows up for people to see if that's a project that they're interested in or not. Uh, you can always return back to the main page there um, where it says project overview that takes you back to the main page. And you also notice down here on the bottom that there's um, that there's little red asterisk by each section. And as you complete that section, um, that will that little red asterisk will be removed. And so you'll know um, when you're done or not, um, and you won't be able to submit your proposal until all of those sections are done. So if you're not seeing that submit button show up, um, then that's because you need to go back and complete one section in there. Uh, you can go back and then view your draft at any time. So that's where you click that little button up there. Um, it'll show you that. And a nice feature um, of the website is that you can, um, let's see here, let's see, you can edit your proposal. Is that where we have that? Um, yep, oh, sorry, skipping ahead. Um, no, oh, that's where we had it. And you get a link that you can um, share your proposal with um, with colleagues, either if um, you know you're putting together the application and you want to share it with um, your your farmer rancher collaborators or you want someone else to help you review it, um, you can share that link with them. Okay, let's see it. Uh, just a, a note again in the budget, um, be sure to explain how um, both how you need to use that um, item in your project and then also show your math because like I said, we do um, go through all of the budgets and make sure every item is justifiable and that we are allowed to cover that. Um, cost. If there's something that <clears throat> you put in the proposal that you'd like to do that we can't we can't pay for the our um, our host in institution has some um, rules and regulations about what we can and cannot pay for. So we would we would work with you on we can't cover that, but maybe we could we could tweak that. Make sure to save early and save often because, like I said, the pro the system does not save um, automatically. All right, um, you will need to gather your institutional information. And so we've got a link there if you're not sure what your um, unique entity ID is, um, they can help you find time for that. <clears throat> um, and then also make sure that you leave time for um, uh, getting your institutional sign off sheet done. Um, it, if you're at a university, it can take a week or more. Um, if you're a nonprofit organization, um, check with folks to see if it needs board approval when you need to do that. So um, leave a lot of time. Um, I've, I've heard sometimes the boards can take a month, you know, based on when they meet and what their, their rules are. Okay, um, so the thing about the application sign off sheet, the best way to do it is to get everything put together in your proposal, print off a PDF of that proposal, and then go in and sign and then print off this um, application sign off page. And then you're going to take that to your institution so that um, whoever's signing it off, they can see your project, they can see your budget and make sure that that's something that the institution wants to cover. Okay. Uh, let's see here.
here. I think that's all I want to say about that. Then you can go in and upload um, the resumes and the letters of participation. Then um, once you've completed all those sections, like I said, then the submit proposal button will um, get darker and you'll be able to click on that uh, when you're ready to submit. Um, if you don't see that button, again, you may have missed a section and go back through the sections to make sure you've got everything um, completed in there. Make sure, I know it may seem a little silly, but make sure that your email address is correct uh, because that is our main form of communication. So um, if you're not getting something from us, make sure that you got that right. Um, or you can call us and say, hey, I submitted it. Um, we can check on it. All right, and then you click submit again. Um, and then congratulations, you have submitted your proposal. Um, like I said, if you, you will get an email confirmation that you did submit it. If you don't see that, let us know. Check, like I said, make sure your email is, address is correct. And because um, that's our primary form of communication with you. Uh, just so you know, um, if you submitted it and then something changes, a partner leaves, a budget situation changes, timeline changes, whatever it is, you can go in and unsubmit um, up until the deadline. So at p.m. on October 17th, you won't be able to change it again. But up until then, you can go in and tweak things. Um, we won't we won't do anything with it until that point. Uh, but you do have to make sure that you resubmit, um, make sure you hit submit proposal again, otherwise it won't um, go um, be uploaded and be considered complete. Okay, um, so then uh, let's see, if you want to find it again, you can log back into projects.sare.org and then um, you will see um, a manage grant applications um, section there and you can look at your various uh, projects and do what you need to do. Okay, so from now, so that's all that I want to talk about. So your next steps are you're going to go read the call for proposals. You're going to call a friend to help you um, uh, fine tune your project. You're going to search the SARE database for related projects and how yours relate, know how yours relates to that. Draft your proposal in, um, in a word processing application set up your account in projects.sare.org, try scoring your own proposal, and call us with questions. So that's what we've got. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, do we have any more questions after that? Oh my gosh, we're right at time too, so we can make it short. Just a lot, of, grat lot, of, just a lot of gratitude um, from folks and yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for your time. I hope this was helpful. We do love feedback. If there's anything else that would be interesting to know, certainly let us know. We look forward to reading your proposals and uh, seeing you down the road. I think with that, I'm going to, well, I'm just going to leave my information up there in case people want to um, jot it down. Otherwise, thank you all and have a great day.